Take me to where the wind begins. When the wind blows, it sings as it flows over the land. When it blows through cottonwoods, its song is different than the song it creates when it blows high above in the tops of ponderosa pine. Together wind and trees make music. The earth is the instrument and the wind is like the breath of the flute player. The body of the earth, too, is like a wonderful flute. We are here to let the great spirit come singing through us each with our own wonderful song, no two flutes alike. There may be a limited amount of notes, yet as composers have demonstrated from the inception of their art since the beginning of time, those notes can come together in an infinite number of ways. Just like people, the wood, the stone, even the plastic of the flute can come from so many different places on the earth. Eastern cedar is not the same as western cedar. Walnut has a different resonance than birch. You will get more resonance from a wood flute than a stone flute. Softwoods have the most resonance. So, like the flute, be soft towards yourself and for your music, and resonate with harmony as compassion and peace. As people, it is better to be soft with a strong resonance so our song can travel past the limitations of who we think we are and ripple through the world. We harden to protect ourselves. Hardening can start in the mind with the thought or belief, and then it finds its way into the body. This wondrous instrument known as the body is a doorway to the soul. Let the wind invite you with your breath to lovingly soften to the forgotten sacred within that you have come to fear. We fear our own feelings, our own music. We seem to harden to the world, but this hardening is to our most intimate and deep pain, which becomes a wall to that true presence we are. The breath of the wind teaches the soft touch of love even when it's strong. But the wind, too, can reflect any emotional movement even in its power of destruction, as in the rage of a tornado or a hurricane. The holes of the flute are like centers in the body that get gummed up with old trauma and pain. We get out of harmony, and our song seems to leave us. Or the channel through which the spirit of one moves gets tied in a series of knots that become a pattern of protection. These knots are woven from the fabric of our thoughts and beliefs and the elemental substance of emotions. When your soul's song can fly like an uncaged bird, you become the wind and the hawk or the raven, the eagle or the vulture upon the wind, and there is only the song of creation. The wind is different when I am below in a canyon than it is when I am on a mountain top above. Cool, hot, gentle, strong, scented with juniper, creosote to the very earth itself. We hear it. We see it. We smell it. We feel it. We touch its being with our being. It's an invitation. The wind is a gentle or strong presence that can seem to respond to a feeling or a thought or an action. When you sit in the circle as the true action of self-love, and the feelings ripple through you as you kneel with your head to the ground, the touch of the wind breathes with a song of liberation, as if what moves inside of you is moving all around you. It can bless you and grace you as the touch of the quiet presence that moves all things. The spiraling tracks on the tips of your fingers and the top of your head for the Navajo are reflections of this great mystery of movement that is in all life. You breathe, the trees breathe, and the very ground breathes, and the wind connects you with the breathing movement in all things. So even in its motion, it can carry you to the motionless beginning, to the motionless quiet that you are. The wind is not only something you hear, but also something you feel. 
The wind on your whole body can anchor you in the now. All you have to do is re-engage your deep listening. The phrase, take me to where the wind begins, is like asking your inner guru to take you to where your thinking begins, to the presence that it all emerges from. Take me to where the wind begins. Take me to the center from which all things stir. Is there any place on earth where the wind does not blow? This is a presence you can find in the tallest building in the largest city on the earth. Just stick your head out the window, or go up on top of the roof and ask, Take me to where the wind begins. Even in deep tunnels and caverns in the earth, the air moves. There are holes in the earth on the Colorado Plateau where the air rushes out at 30 miles per hour and rushes back in at the same speed, set in motion by underground waters that ebb and flow with the moon. The Hopi believe these are the very lungs of the earth, so even this physical earth breathes. What if you are some place where the wind does not blow? Then don't give up. This wind is the call of the quiet, and the quiet has many doors. The true ultimate door is closer than anything else in the world. You. As long as you inhabit this physical form, the wind is moving within you. Does the wind know me? Does it talk to me? Take me to where the wind begins, I ask. Where does it begin? Where does it start? Let the place where the wind begins be a mystery. You can explain it through weather science, but you cannot pinpoint where it begins. You cannot pinpoint where it ends. You feel it when it moves, and you feel it when it stops. It is a mystery this place of origin. But if you ask, it's as if you can go there. But it's the same kind of there as the place where your thinking begins. As you sit, feeling where the wind begins, feel it come together with the place where your thinking begins. You can't name it. Take me to where the wind begins is another mantra chant that echoes, I don't know. You can only feel it. You can only feel it as a keenly awake presence that is at once the whole sky and you as the center, a center that then becomes centerless and one. You don't have to think about breathing. It just happens. But what has accumulated as unmoved emotional history weighs upon you? The willingness to breathe is the willingness to live and feel. Most thinking interrupts full, natural breathing because most thinking is about controlling. That is why your breath is so important to this medicine of one. It's immediate and tangible and you can free it. You can clear the way to full body breathing. You can breathe beyond the limits of your body as the circle and your breath can be filled with the true action of self-love. You only have to allow it and have faith. Let your very breath be a love that you give to yourself. Let the wind be your very breath circling back to you as a blessing. Let it bless you as you abide in the place where the wind begins. Deep Listening Deep listening occurs when the experience and the experiencer are one. There is no separation. There is no subject and object. You are in the flow on the river of life. The listening I am talking about isn't associated with sound. It's a way to describe profound attentiveness. You are attending to a deeper flow. This listening allows you to ride the surf to the center of the labyrinth. Without it, 
you will lose your balance and be sucked into the spinning undertow of the mind. Because our minds are so allied to our survival, and because we are struggling to survive from the first breath of air we take, our trust becomes misplaced. Instead of surrendering to the greater oneness we are born from, this mental, controlling, survivalist force rules our circle. Because this controlling force functions primarily from fear, we can't hear the deeper truth because we don't know how to trust. This listening becomes the active walking of the path to the truth of who you are. It is this listening that brings you the experience which answers the question, Who am I? I say path because it is like learning to walk. You don't learn to walk by waiting for your legs to move. For the first time you stand on your own two feet, maybe with help, and then you do it without any help. There is a little help with those first few steps and finally the magic moment when something inside you knows walking. You walk and you never forget. And just maybe this walking is a remembering of something you already knew. Translate this into levels of listening. Feel yourself in these moments of transition as you move out of a natural deep listening presence. First, in the womb, something enters the human fetus as a unique presence. Unique but inseparable, even as it bathes in amniotic fluid, like a drop in the ocean that's still inseparable from that ocean. Feel yourself as this thoughtless presence that is still so close to what is not born and what does not die. Now feel your birth and the birth of awareness as the dot in the circle begins. You begin and awareness begins. Your world begins and you begin your journey of survival. In this beginning, you are the deep listening. But part of your survival will be a disconnection that results in not listening, not knowing, not feeling. Abandoning your emotional world will be part of how you survive. What was once natural becomes unnaturally unlearned. But your true self's first manifestation as I is this deep listening presence that evolves into awareness, which leads to awareness of the world, which leads to the experience of separateness. The big I is separated into the little I. That moment when you get up off the floor and walk is also when you take a definitive step into this little I and begin to separate from the big I. The next step will be when that little you begins talking, talking and walking. Ah, the praise, the attention. Give me more. I think I will giggle and laugh and do a little dance for you to make you happy. Now you learn that how you behave determines the quality of the attention you receive. We want loving, appreciative attention. So you mold yourself to that at the expense of what you are really feeling. You begin to learn how to put on a smiling mask, which seems to allow you to control how others respond to you. You separate from your true presence and unlearn the deep listening which is just being in intimate contact with the truth of how you feel in the moment where the big eye is. You are losing the deep listening that connects you with the one, and everyone around you encourages you to do so. You have entered the maze that will create confusion until you choose to awaken to your listening and journey through the labyrinth of self. 
In this stage of your childhood, the most immediate desire is, I want to be loved. Your want is not a thought any more than hunger is a thought. You want warmth that brings safety. We need this circle of love to become emotionally healthy. Now there is you and everyone else, you and the others, who can give you what makes you feel good. You have a hunger for a particular kind of experience that depends on others. Now you are the experiencer who wants a particular kind of experience that is provided to you from another human, from something other than you. Your need and hunger cause you to split off from the flow of your deep listening. You listen as a hungry ghost. The experiencer and the experience are no longer unified. You have separated from your deep listening, forsaking your journey to the true self and the labyrinth, and entered the maze of wanting, with the thinking mind as your guide. Without this deep listening, it will be as if you grabbed a false thread that would lead you to a false center. Seeking true love and peace, you reach outward toward others, giving them the power to determine your centeredness. Worry becomes the great block to trust and deep listening. Worry presents many options as well as the worry of which thread to choose. Deep listening follows one thread of truth, but the thread lies hidden beneath the louder noise of the worrying mind. Consider invoking your deep listening that penetrates beneath the rapid motions of the thinking mind. Consider committing yourself to deep listening. See with your ears. Listen with your eyes. Smell with your whole body. If what you hear is the quiet, this is the listening I am talking about. I am not talking about the voices of spirits or God speaking in the human language. This listening I am speaking of hears what is there before language and stalks through the woods of Who am I? Its prey is the origin of thought. The mind that listens sees itself as hunter and prey merged into one as they become the unmoving circle in which they move. This listening is not your mind looking for tangible answers you can hold like an object in your hands, nor is it a seeing that can delineate what it has found. Deep listening occurs when the experience and the experiencer are one. There is no separation. There is no subject and object. You are in the flow on the river of life. The true thread leads you to your own loving presence. The true action of self-love is made possible by this presence that listens before thought. You grasp the thread as this action of deep listening. As this listening, you follow the thread of truth home to the big eye. The journey. You are here to be here. The journey is the journey to this here. The journey to the center is not a straight line. In their midst, the Hopis speak of the great migrations in which they journeyed in the four directions to where the land meets the sea until a cross was created, a cross with a center. The center was not apparent until the migrations ended, because the center was not where four lines of the directions met. It was a place of empowerment that could only be felt upon their arrival. This place was on the Colorado Plateau, which spreads out over 130,000 square miles into four states. Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, 
Arizona. It is considered by geologists to be a very stable landmass and capable of surviving many potential cataclysms predicted by both scientists and seers that could shake the whole earth. In their myths, the Hopi referenced previous ends of the known world. The world has ended more than once, and the fifth world is currently upon us. The third world ended with the two twin heroes, Pokwanhoya and Polongahoya, switched places causing the ocean to be hurled over the continents of the earth. The Great Flood. Scientists have determined the poles have reversed as many times as eleven times in the Earth's history. Mammoths have been found in Siberia suddenly frozen with tropical vegetation still in their stomach. In an instant, climates changed from tropical to arctic and vice versa. When the Great Flood was upon them, the Hopi migrated across the Pacific Ocean over seven stepping stones, one of which was the Hawaiian Islands, and eventually landed in Central America. Here they were instructed by their earth god, Maasau, who is also the god of fire and death, to migrate in the four directions to where the land meets the sea, and then turn around and come back. Once these movements were completed, they were to settle at the center place where the lines all meet, the center of a cross. This place at the center was called Oribi, place where the earth is solid. In this center where the Hopi still live, they embraced the responsibility for keeping the world in balance as part of the spine of the whole tribe. They do this not only by living at the center place, but also through their actions of ceremony, dance, music, and thought, which vibrate out into the world. This is part of the path of being a traditional Hopi. The parallels between this tribal responsibility of living at the center and living at the center of your own personal circle of self can clearly be seen. When you live at the center of the circle of who you are, this circle is connected to the whole world without separation. This means by living from this center in your own immediate everyday world, a vibration ripples out into the greater world to keep it in balance and harmony. This is the best thing you can do for the whole world. Just as the Hopi journeyed to the center of their own grand labyrinth to arrive at a place of solid ground, we too must journey to the center of the self, a journey to solid ground, where we vibrate through our presence as the spine of our life and gift the world. In this place of solid ground, no matter what happens in the world outside of you, if you remain committed to the path of living there, the directions are truly within you. So when the earth of your world reverses and shifts, you remain with your feet on the ground. With your feet on the ground, you realign with the true north of yourself. What does it mean to have solid ground under your feet? What does it mean to dwell in a place that can survive the greatest traumas? Being grounded is a very common term associated with stability and peace. What causes us to be ungrounded? The word ungrounded means the inability to occupy now, this moment. All our unmoved history blocks the way. The journey through the labyrinth is equally a journey through the psycho-emotional-physical terrain of your own physicality as a human being on this planet. You are here to be here. The journey is the journey to this here. If you have the feeling of having no center, like a ship adrift on the sea without the power to move, or the inner compass to direct and guide, 
then finding your center is the journey of coming home to yourself. It's a journey that listens to the ground to unite the sky and the earth. Sometimes the journey can be very literal, as it was with the Hopi, a movement from one location to another. Places and geographical locations can mirror our inner journey. But the journey is within, a journey that can be lived even if you stay in one physical location your whole life. The true migrations are a journey to the center of yourself. But even that statement is an illusion. How can you journey to something you already are and always have been? The journey is more about removing the obstacles. Your awareness lights the way, and true compassion clears the way home. Some people's journeys are gypsy-like, and others are more stationary. Many Native Americans were nomadic while others were sedentary farmers. You don't need to be a farmer to cultivate truth, and you don't need to be a gypsy to acquire experiential wisdom. Truth and wisdom are who you are, as descriptions of your compassion, adjectives to that state of being the circle. At some point, you have to awaken in the dream and choose to live consciously if you want peace. Consciousness is not the thinking mind. The thinking mind is like a spider's web spinning out of consciousness. It's the labyrinth turned into a maze. The labyrinth is quite simple. It has one entrance and one route that twists and turns but carries you to the center. All you have to do is follow the route. A maze can have many entrances, branches, and dead ends. It generates confusion. The more you try to think your way out, the more lost you get. In the maze, you are guided by desire, hunger, and fear, which mean control and a lot of thinking. The real you is right there before the spinning begins. Will the maze live you, polarize, and magnetize you into the endless spin of cycles, which never lead you to the center? Or will you wake up and choose to clear the way and walk the labyrinth to the center that has always been there? If you follow the journey of the labyrinth, the first two rounds seem to lead us away from the center, often like the first stages of our lives. We lose both the power of our soul and the knowing that directs us. The center can be misperceived as lying in this visible world of particular places, things, people, or even states of being which need to be acquired. Be very mindful of what you want. If your want is to be loved, appreciated, and valued, and that is your true north, your compass will gyrate endlessly, moving from one so-called true north to another. You will be ruled by the hunger for these things. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey. This saying is about living in the moment. In the medicine of one, it would read, the journey is the destination because the destination is the journey. Even if you don't know where something is going to lead you, if your intuitive compass is magnetized to the true north of who you are and the spine of your life, the journey becomes the destination. They are inseparable. As you leap out of the maze and move toward the center of the labyrinth, which is the circle, in this journey, simplicity begins to rule. Cultivate your presence on the journey as the true action of self-love, a compassion that delivers you to freedom. Freedom through compassion, clearing the way to the center. As you journey through all the twists and turns of life, Anchor yourself in the great circle it all moves in. 
The center is the feeling of flow, surrender, knowing, trust, confidence, and openness. Protected not by a hard wall, but with your soft radiance. It is the little you that gets out of the way so that life is simply done through you, perfectly, and not by you. You must make the choice. Do you want to live in the outer rings that are a maze of separation, mind, beliefs, materialism, greed, etc.? Or do you want to align with what your soul really wants? Peace, truth, and beauty. The difficulty begins when we forget we are the whole, and in that forgetting our center seems lost like something to be gained. In fact, the loss can be so painful, we feel we can no longer go on in this state of separation. We feel helpless and powerless. To come to the center seems like a dream that is so far off and so unimaginable that we think, why bother? Why continue? We doubt and wonder if we are at the true entrance. Maybe it's over here or over there. The labyrinth becomes a maze as the thinking mind becomes dominant. If only I had. If only I hadn't. We all have moments in the journey when we reflect upon both pondered and split-second choices we made. And we believe, if somehow they could be changed or reversed, the course of our life would have been greatly altered. Usually we think altered for the better. Experience is the stone sculptor's chisel. The deepest cuts are not when you get what you want, but rather when something unwanted crosses our path. Pain shapes us more than pleasure. Who wants change when everything feels good? Pain is often the jolt that thrusts us out of a state of complacency, but it can drive us into a corner of inertia and suffering if we run from it. When we run from pain, that's when we hit the wall in the maze. This running is mirrored in the racing of the mind banging against the walls where there seems no exit. The journey back to the center may require the gathering of soul medicine and the transformation of imprisoned pain into a movement of life, a movement of music. This is the ford that may require gazing backward. All of your old bricks of pain hold within them the medicine of wholeness. Your greatest physician is you, as the medicine of one, as the circle, and the remedies lay waiting within you. It's time to grab the thread of the true self, which guides us out of the maze of the survivalist mind and transform the maze into a labyrinth whose inward spiraling brings us home to the center where both maze and labyrinth are now a simple circle of one. It's time to reclaim your deep listening. River of Bone There is a place of bone-white rock that sings a song of silence and peace. It sings in my bones and lullabies my mind into its arms of harmonic quiet. A canyon, where the river runs dry, a wash where water seldom flows yet is formed by the flow of water. White rocks smoothed by water-borne sand. Water moves beneath the rock and sends its flowing magnetism to the surface. The water moves invisibly beneath the bones or through the bones. I feel it in my body like a dowser's wand to this living flow. This place is called skeleton bone. So here too is a current to surrender to. I bow to it as another of my gurus of the silence. I bow, I listen, I sit, and I walk in its grace. 
Our bones are full of space, far less solid than concrete, yet stronger. And they sang with the fire of electricity. They sang with the flow born from the opposites, that spark of life force as the one comes into form. Our bones are the deepest foundational structure of our body. Fish swim in the sea, but they too have bones. And this place of bone-white rock was originally sediment on the bottom of the sea. When our bodies naturally return to the earth without the action of fire, our bones survive, sometimes for many thousands of years, until they too become rock. Our bones sang with the songs of rock and stone. They channeled them as an unnameable force. Many native healers pray to become a hollow bone in preparation to heal. Being a hollow bone is getting out of the way. It is an unobstructed channel through which the river of life can flow, through me, not by me. I come quietly, and I sit. The longer I sit, the more I am permeated by the quiet that sleeps in my very bones. This place awakens me to what is within, to the peace that I am. All places help us to remember the quiet presence that we are. All places have their own unique song of this quiet, some audible and some inaudible. They are all present as resonant gurus to carry us to our deeper truth. Deep listening is not just with the ears and the eyes. This bone rock is silky smooth and cool in winter and pleasantly warm in summer. I lay in its warm white hand and surrender my tension, my history, my thinking, everything, until the only thing left is this quiet feeling of I am. In this I am physically touched by the rock, and resonantly touched as I surrender until nothing is left to surrender. But something is still awake, lying there. All enlightenment techniques are meant to lead us to this quiet I amness, to taste it, touch it, hear it, and to know it as the oneness we seek, that we all seek, that we all are. In this surrendering of our history, we become the presence that has been there in every moment and beyond the beginning and the end. But do you know what you seek? Or do you think you know and block the way to what is there in this so-called knowing? Can you touch the quiet in the rock? No matter where you live, even in the city, there is rock, there is sky, there is sun, there is wind. Can you touch it with your deep listening? Or is there no time in your life to reclaim your deep listening this earth is willing to help you with? People try to think their way to this quiet, and it is this very thinking that must be given up. Give it up. This earth is here to help you give it up. But you must seek it. You must go to it. You must surrender to it. Although I am sharing my special places of rock, when I say earth, I mean this earth we inhabit. This earth we sprout from is a living web that we are woven into. This web is home to the ocean, the mountains, the canyons, the forests, the lakes, the rivers, and the trees and rocks in your own backyard. The places that call to you could be on the sea, where you are held in a gentle breathing hand or sitting where water meets rock in a great crash and roar. The medicine of one is my personal world, which I share with you. So take it and bring it into your own world in which you live. Don't defeat yourself with thoughts like, I don't have these kinds of places. Find a way. Find a spot to be quiet. Don't wait. You will find these white rocks in all of my circles, 
It links them as one. I have never conceptualized this linking up of the circles. It's something in the background of my awareness. These rocks, once they have been in a circle, have the uncanny effect of balancing and strengthening people, of rooting them like an ancient tree. The strength of these rocks that have been in the circle, I did not create or consciously orchestrate. I simply discovered it. I am always moving with the sense I don't know so that I may become aware of what may have always been there but never since before. And I will go on discovering as long as I am here. This sensing of the quiet deepens through the years. I seem to deepen into it. But it's just the tenacity of my mind giving way to a graceful fall into grace, into the hands of the quiet, godly, Oneness. So many words to simply say. Be quiet. Be the quiet. So many words to make the journey to the true experience of what it means to be bone quiet. As quiet as this canyon of bony, heavenly rock. We start out following a rope trail of words our minds grabbing the rope one hand after the other until we reach the chasm of no return. No thread of thought or word will carry us forward. No fiber of what we know. We have to leap into the quiet space and trust. We have to act. We must begin the journey back to the center of who we are. Clear the way. When you clear the way, you invoke the power of your soul. Walk with me in the desert. Feel the warm touch of the wind, the heat of the sun, and the smell of earth and plants. Let the wonder of your senses bring you into this moment. Your very soul is a vast library of sensorial experience, and so in this moment, be so fully present as you touch with your eyes See with your ears, listen with your body, and are awakened as you inhale the desert sense. See the raven just above us, hovering in one place with wings spread, gently rocking to and fro, movement within the unmoving, neither going up nor down, forward nor backward, yet in constant subtle motion to maintain stillness. In this marriage of movement and stillness, hovering motionless in the gusty wind, is the demonstration of meeting experience, fully aware, fully engaged, fully here is a unity of will, awareness, trust, and courage, a soul moving through experience, one with the wind, one with the sky, one with the flow. The immediate world for that raven is the ever-changing wind. If the wind comes from another direction, the raven must adjust, sensing with primordial attention and then performing an action, large or small, to remain hovering in one place. The particular form of the raven's outstretched wings as a thrust of will reflects its willfulness. Now, this sensing awareness, attention, and the willful all swim in the wind as the action of trust. This trust is seen as the dance on the wind, riding the wind, give and take with the wind, yet miraculously staying in one place. They all come together as soul inhabits the raven's body and hovers in the wind. These three things come together in the moment, and in the moment they are one. The raven does not know what the wind is going to do before the moment in which it happens, and yet, perhaps, it senses beyond the visible something as subtle as air pressure or temperature. There is something happening in that moment that it knows will lead to the next, and the raven adjust to ride the flow. 
as a soul, its full presence comes together in awareness, will, and trust. And in that presence, it is inextricably connected to the web of life and inseparably from all things. It is what it is. The soul of a raven dancing through life. Soul. What a wonderful word of magic and power. But what a mystery it is. What is soul? And what is a soul? Think of the soul as something unique, enlivened with life force shaped by experience, but as subtle as the experience of color, scent, or presence invoked by its form. The soul is not something you can hold in your hand and touch. Soulfulness is inseparable from your hereness in this body. We separate spirit, soul, body, and mind to talk about them, but they are meant to be unified in their hereness on the earth. If the circle is a oneness that ripples on into infinity, the soul is the experiential energy that ripples inseparably out into the greater circle of you. The soul comes from one light into this world and manifests as a soul rainbow. The soul is like a unique prism carved from experience through which the one light passes. When you turn your attention upon itself, you sit in the prism as the one light, as a dot within the circle, a sun within the greater sun. Off in the distance are two sandstone buttes shaped by the forces of wind, water, trees, and the plants rooting in them. The trees growing in the rock chip and carve away at it through the force of their roots, which wedge and break the rock apart. So the life that grows on the butte shapes it as it supports that life. One butte is flowing and rounded like a woman lying on her back. The other is the head of a warrior gazing sternly up into the sky. The form invokes a presence, a soul. The experience of that soul is the very ancient history of its life in the elements. This outer form comes into shape from the relationship between the inner form of the soul and the elemental forces of experience. When you think of history, your personal history, your experience, think soul experience. All of your soul's experience, which is unlikely to find full expression in your present historical memory. We come here with experience. How that happens isn't as important as the feeling that it is true. I don't need to cultivate a belief in past lives to honor the history that seems to come from the dream time. If the story resonates with me, then it has a reality for me. How we met the experience of old stories shapes us, just like the soulful inner form and the inner forces of life have shaped the butte. The unlived outcome of stories may yet lie trapped in the very atomic anatomy of the body. If we are, in fact, the whole world, then every story is within us. Partially lived stories can haunt and imprison us. How we meet new experiences, how we adapt to them, is determined by how we met the experiences of the past. Does the experience flow through us, uninhibited? Or do we reject components of the experience based upon our survival and keep the old stories cycling into the present? The choices for survival accumulate as stories lived in one way. The rejection of experience and emotions, coupled with rigid defensive thoughts and beliefs, make the body of this life, our sacred home in this form, difficult to occupy. Rejected experience creates separation, steals our peace, and energizes our reactions to life. We cannot be so fully present, and the spine of our life cannot easily gift the world. It becomes impossible to be here now. 
Rather than unity and harmony, we are out of harmony and separated. The problem is that the soul cannot fully find its home in this body of this life. The way is blocked and it cannot attend to this now. The difference between the raven and us is that we have the ability to direct our attention back into this presence and know this awareness that leads us to the truth of who we are. The raven is just being it. However, this gift of knowing, when turned outward, becomes the dilemma and curse of human beings, thinking, and the need to control. One of my wolf dog helpers was named Hantio. Hantio means clear the way. He quickly earned his name by his action to go straight for what he wanted. He lived from a place of freedom. His soul knew no other way. He was always true to himself. His soul aligned with his true nature. He knew what he wanted. Antio's clearing the way had a softer side as well. He had the softest hair of any dog I have ever touched. In his service to the many people who visited us for help, he seemed to align himself with its full meaning in the medicine of one. He gifted many people with his soft, loving presence. Some have actually told me that it was this touch that freed them from the need to seek love and rooted them in the knowing that they were loved. He had a polar bear-like presence that gave them courage and brought them into the awareness of their own courage. With this unconditional love and courage, he reminded them who they are and reflected back to them their own self-compassion. We need soul to be here now. Many people live from the heart up and many from the head up. Frozen pain occupies the space below, which prevents one from being present in this world. To clear the way is to melt down through the frozen pain with the very warmth of self-love. It is the heartfelt re-entering into the unlived and the unloved experiences within ourselves, a conscious flight into the dark, forgotten, rejected pain as a compassionate, liberating light. We reclaim our soulfulness so we may live the dream of the soul in this life and reside in the reality from which it is born, a soul infused and dwelling in the great spirit, the oneness of the circle of godliness that we are. This is the new choice, the path to what you want. Clearing the way is like breaking a part of yourself out of prison with compassion. It's an act of liberation. To be free is to be free of all history, all stories. Experience is a dance that invokes the mind, emotion, and body. The soul is the dancer. This freedom and liberation is a return of the rhythm, flexibility, and strength of the limbs of the soul. The raven trusts the wind and surrenders to it. It takes courage to move forward, out of the controlling that knows, into the unknown. The need to control is driven by the fear of death. The fear of the death of this dream called you me, I. It takes courage to die. It's a step out of a life of survival toward the center of the circle of truth, the big I. Through self-loving, the reality of fear is dissolved. Your music is freed and sings through the spine of your life. You can more easily reside in the home of who you are. The soul, fully rooted in the home of now, is capable of living free from history as it stands in the arms of the Great Spirit. The medicine of one is being a love that clears the way. Strangely enough, it takes courage to love yourself as you give up the safety of your thinking mind and anchor your head in your heart. Awareness, will, and trust are unified to bring you to the center. 
Your body is the sacred home of the soul in this life born from the one from which we often use the word God, Great Spirit. The name isn't important. When I ask you to take my hand, as I support you as the circle, I am demonstrating this greater circle of you taking your hand and leading you courageously forward. Awareness, will, and trust come together in this world courageously as self-compassion. A world as unpredictable as the raven's world of the wind. We walk together. And as we walk through the garden of ourselves and encounter impasses, the way is cleared. Through the invocation of this compassionate big I, a radiant presence of truth as tangible as the greater you wrapping its arms around your very soul's pain, we clear the way. We walk with it, and we free it as we invoke it. From the first moment of letting something move inside of you, without impeding it, you are learning the medicine of one. Spread the wings of your suffering to the open sky of your own compassion and fly home to the now in your body. That moment can begin right now. <laughs>